hello everyone. Uh, my name is Inao Chu. I come from uh, National Jiao Tong University in Taiwan. And I also have uh, several uh, joint positions. One is in Academia Seneca, another one is in Industry Technology Research Institute. Uh, they are also in Taiwan. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to show the recent progress of, uh, from my lab. And I, I also want to apologize because I feel when I submit the abstract, I made a mistake. And the, uh, the topic I want to share with you is to develop a uh, transparent and a flexible uh, PDC cells. And today I will show you uh, how we do it. I think in this session, uh, people want to use the power of sun because we want to use uh, the solar energy to do many things. I think uh, a lot of people are focused, for example, on uh, solar cells. And I want to focus more on uh, water splitting. And for the uh, water splitting, I think a lot of people use uh, TiO to a uh, link outside. And basically, they try to build up like the nail structures to increase the surface area. Then in this case, you can uh, generate a uh, large photo color. That means you can have more efficient uh, photo electrochemical cell. But uh, in my study, we want to do something differently. That means we want to uh, make a, 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 a photo electrochemical cell. But uh, we want that cell to be flexible and uh, transparent, okay? So for us to build up a flexible, transparent uh, photo electrochemical cell, there are four requirements we need to pay attention to. First, uh, because you want to be flexible and transparent, so you need to have a subject, which is also transparent and flexible. Then you need to have transparent electrodes on top. Then you need to have transparent photo electrodes on top. And all these have to show thermal and the chemical stabilities. Okay, so you need to uh, have a structure which can uh, 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 meet all these requirements. So uh, the first thing I want to share with you is that what structure we can use. So if you want to do flexible uh, device, you need to pick up flexible substrates. And currently, if you want to search for flexible substrates, there are three very a typical uh, flexible substrates. One is an auto adding class, okay? Then it's a polymer substrate, then it's auto adding metal. And we want it to be transparent, so we cannot use this one. But if you look for the polymer substrates, the problem is that some of the stability and the chemical stability is not very good. And probably we will go with uh, thin glass. But when we try to build up something on thin glass, uh, most of the structure we have is either amorphous or polycrystalline. So uh, the chemical stability and the thermal stability is also not very good. So today I want to show you we use different substrate, which is muscovite. Uh, in Chinese, yimu pian. And uh, why we pick up this? Because when you build up something on top, and you can heat it up to very high temperature, and you still have a very, very good thermal stability. And if you put it into the solution, you also have a very, very good uh, uh, chemical stability, okay? Then the next question is that when we pick up muscovite substrates, what other materials we can put on, okay? So now let me give you a quick introduction of the muscovite substrate. And these are muscovite substrate you can, you, can, you can buy from companies, okay? Uh, it's something like this. Now I have a two-inch wafer with me, so you can uh, get Anyway, it's about two inch, and you can also get like a four inch wafer uh, from company. The melting temperature uh, it is very, very high. And uh, it, uh, because it can be cleaved uh, very perfect, uh, perfectly uh, on one zero zero uh, direction, so you can get very, very, very smooth surface. And it's also a layer material, it's like a graphene, but there is a stack of oxide, so you can also peel then you can get a very, very clean service, okay? And everything is crystalline. It's a single crystalline. It's not amorphous, okay? 
and uh, we spent some time to uh, learn how to engineer the service of the mask provider. So if you read, if you check here, this is a read pattern. Uh, this to show the service of your subtrace. If the service of subtrace is not very smooth, then you will see a sparky like patterns, or you will not see any pattern. Every time when we see these stripey like patterns, that means your service is very great. So that means you can use must provide for a simple interpretation. Okay? So because uh, the must provide is a two dimensional layer materials. So when you try to put down something on top of two dimensional layer materials, if you can have the uh, epitaxy, and we call this kind of epitaxy is render or epitaxy. Okay? And the key is that you have very weak interaction between your subject and the your materials. For example, a lot of people are doing uh, uh, try to draw uh, two dimensional layer materials on two dimensional layer materials. And this is one type of vendor of epitaxy. And the second type of vendor of epitaxy is try to build up a two dimensional layer materials on top of three dimensional substrates. For example, you can use SAP as a substrate which is a three-dimensional subject, and you can draw MOS2 on top. Then this is also a vendor work task because uh, the interaction between uh, the subject and the theme is very weak. And you can also do it oppositely. Then you pack two-dimensional layer materials as your subject, and then put down three-dimensional materials on top. For example, you can have graphene, then you put down gain nitride on top. Gain nitride is a three-dimensional functional materials. Graphene is a two-dimensional layer uh, 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 two-dimensional layer materials, and you can peel off from these layers, then you can have a flexible device, okay? So in my study, we take the mask of our subject and try to put down three-dimensional functional materials on top. Then, uh, because now we have a subject, then you also need to have the electrodes. Uh, for the electrical electrodes, we pick up two materials. One is uh, IPO, and another one is aluminum or zinc oxide. Okay. And then we uh, start to depart it, uh, the, uh, sorry for this, uh, we try to depart the IPO and the uh, ADO on top of mass provide. And you can clearly see all these x-ray uh, pics. One is coming from IPO, this one is coming from ADO. And this is the mass provide substrate. And if you check the five scan of your uh, samples, you can clearly see pics. This only happens when you have the epitaxy. If it's a polycrystalline thin beam, when you do the five scan, you will never see any ticks. Okay? Then uh, we can determine the epitaxial relationship between the uh, IPO and the muscovite, uh, ADO and the muscovite. That means they do have a very strong orientation dependent uh, epitaxial relationship. So everything is almost uh, like a single crystalline uh, 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 substrate. And I also have a very, uh, sorry for this, also have a, a very nice feature. You can see this IPO, and then this is the buffer layer, and we have the mask by the subject. For the aluminum of zinc oxide, you also have this mask by the subject. And you, also, you can also do the deflection patterns. This is a confirmation of epitaxial flows. So we have a high quality substrate with a high quality electron top. This is unlike the, 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 the substrate you buy from the company, for example, like FPO and glass. FPO basically are amorphous, glass is also amorphous. This everything is almost a single crystal line. Then you wonder about the optical transmittance and uh, the, for example, like the conductivity and the mobility. And the way, uh, this, uh, our sample with different thickness, one for uh, ADO, one for IPO. And basically, we can get the transmittance about 80 to 90, depending on IPO or ADO. And if you check the conductivity and the mobility, and we have also do a comparison with uh, uh, the literature values you can, you can find. And basically, the quality of our samples are very close to uh, the best value you can get from the literature. Okay? So now we also have uh, a transparent subject, transparent electrode. Now you want to know, uh, now everything is, should be flexible. So we also check the flexibility of our samples. For example, you can bend a sample in this direction, or bend a sample in this direction. One is flex in, one is flex out. And you can see the smallest bending uh, radius we can achieve is about uh, five millimeter. 
okay? And then you can also bend it many times. For example, we bend the sample uh, for 1,000 times, and then you can see some of the samples remain a uh, very nice uh, electrical performance, okay? And we can also do a retention. That means you bend a sample, and you keep doing a measurement to see how stable the electrical performance uh, we have. And the basically, what I want to show here is that we do have a subtract with transparent electrode, uh, everything is transparent and flexible. And if you compare uh, the data we have with the subtracts you can buy from the companies, for example, like IPO, we, we can get a transmittance higher than 90%. Uh, the true distance is even smaller compared to uh, whatever uh, IPO thing you can dump on glass or PET. Okay? And we also have a comparison for the ADO. And everything is transparent and also flexible. Okay. Then the next question is that now we have a good electro, uh, good, uh, electrical electrodes. Now we also need to build up a photo uh, electrodes on top. So in, uh, in uh, today's presentation, I want to show you a combination with uh, iron oxide and the zinc oxide. Okay. So uh, we pick up this one because the tank gap is, is uh, small. But we will only use a very, very thin uh, sample because we want everything to be transparent. Okay, so this layer cannot be very thick. And this one basically can't absorb the visible light. So we try to combine these two materials and the, use the muscle by the substrate and also use the ADO as the, uh, the electrical uh, electrodes. And the, uh, we use the post laser deposition to prepare the samples. Okay, and then here again, so. This is a uh, this is a sapphire. It's a single crystalline substrate. It's, it's a reference, and people can build a very nice picture of a taxi on sapphire. Basically, we duplicate the same structure on muscovite. And if you check the TM here, you can see uh, this is a muscovite substrate. Here is the zinc oxide, and we have an iron oxide on top. And the addition is a detachable. Okay, from an X-ray diffraction by scan, then we can also determine the epitaxial relationship between uh, uh, our frame uh, and uh, the uh, ADO and also the muscle by the substrate. Then we start to check the properties. Uh, the first thing we check is the optical properties. Again, clear it is a pure iron oxide, then it's around 2 EV. For the pure zinc oxide, about 3.2. Okay. When you combine them together, uh, you check the absorptance. So you can clearly see this part is from the uh, zinc oxide here is uh, coming from the iron oxide. Okay, and then we also down up here for the pure zinc oxide, you can see a very, very strong PL. But when you combine the iron oxide with the zinc oxide, uh, the, the PL signal is suppressed. That means um, maybe there is some charge transfer happen across the interface. So the next uh, question will be what is the band structure uh, when you combine these two materials together? Then we check the most shafty part. Then we can uh, combine with the optical uh, band gap. Then we can draw a band structure like this. Okay. And uh, what really happens is that when you shine a light, then the electron uh, generator in the conduction band will move here, and uh, the hole will move around here to this side. Okay. This is uh, uh, the picture we have. So that means try, when you try to combine these two materials, you will expect uh, the PEC performance should be bad. Then we start to uh, do more measurement. For example, we have done electro impedance spectroscopy, and we have checked the uh, impedance. You can see when you combine these two together, the impedance is uh, smaller compared to the uh, pure two materials. And we have also done the IPC measurement. You can also can you see when we combine these two together, the IPC is also bad. Okay. And how about real PC performance? <coughs> and we have uh, checked uh, the PC performance. This is a pure. Uh, uh, iron oxide, and this is the uh, iron oxide combined with zinc oxide, but it's on sapphire. It's a single crystalline substrate, but it's not flexible. But when you do it on muscle, by the best, but you can get almost uh, the same performance. Okay, and uh, this is a uh, photocurrent function of time. You can see basically uh, the sapphire and the muscle by the same board shows a uh, very similar performance. Now, if you check uh, the uh, optical transmittance, okay. And for the iron oxide with the zinc oxide, we can get the transmittance up to 60%. So it's not really fully transparent. It's more close to semi-transparent, but 
Ellen there, you can see something on your back of the head. So for this type of the photo electro cell, an advantage is it's mechanical flexible and it's also somewhat uh, stable. Okay, and then we want to check what happens when you really bend the sample, right? So you can bend the sample uh, with different uh, ending radius. So we have a check uh, the sample with different bending. One is for flex in, this one is for flex out. Then we check the follow curve. You can see. So for the flex in and the flex out, the smallest bending radius we can achieve is about 3.5 millimeter. But you still maintain very stable uh, PC performance. That means for this kind of PC cell, you can really bend it. Okay. Then uh, we have also tried to do cycling, mechanical cycling. Then you, you can bend sample many times. So we bend a sample for 3,000 times. One is for flex in, one is for flex out. You can see the photo curve basically remain stable. Okay. And then the next question is that how about the chemical stability? We check the stability flex in and flex out for uh, the iron oxide about 20 nanometers. But you will see maybe like uh, uh, this one. It's about like a 30% degrading of your photo curve. Then we slightly increase the thickness of the iron oxide, and we can push it to one day, but the performance is a little bit decreased. So now we are trying to search a solution to fix this. Okay. So what I demonstrate here is uh, almost a fully transparent flex for PC cell. Okay. And uh, because iron oxide uh, is a material which it's not really a uh, it's a visible light material, that means it can absorb a visible light. So the next generation we are now doing is that can we replace that iron oxide with different materials? And currently we are using strontium titanate. So you can see this uh, sample we have on strontium titanate. The transmittance can push up to 80%. And again, everything is still epitaxial. Okay, then these are the PC performance. And basically, the PC performance is uh, also good. And everything is transparent and uh, everything is flexible. And these are uh, uh, IP curve. Okay. Uh, now uh, let me try to summarize my talk. So basically today what I show you is that uh, we develop a platform based on oxide hydrophobic toxin, which you can build up flexible and transparent PC cells. In today's presentation, I show you two transparent PC cells. Based on one is the iron oxide, zinc oxide, AEO muscovite. The other one is a strong titanate. Okay. And the key advantage of this kind of PC cells, they are flexible, they are transparent, chemical, thermal, and mechanical stable. Okay. And what can we use this kind of uh, device? They can be used as window to generate the oxygen, especially for the press with very high humidity. Okay. For example, like in Taiwan. In, in, in winter, every time when I wake up, open the window, we see a lot of water. So that's why we are thinking maybe we can build up some device which can be used to solve this problem. And uh, typically, uh, the device would like uh, something like this. Everything is flexible. Okay. Chemical stable and thermal stable. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. So, uh, for discussion.